At the onset of the Second World War, German tanks rolled into battle with relatively thin armor and modest 37mm guns. But by the final years of the conflict, they fielded machines armed with 75, 88, and even 122mm cannons, protected by thick slabs of steel, a staggering leap in firepower and technology. Yet, throughout that rapid evolution, one thing remained unchanged, the machine gun mounted inside those tanks. From the Panzer III to the King Tiger, German tanks relied on the MG34, a finely machined weapon introduced in the 1930s. And even after the cheaper, faster, and arguably more lethal MG42 was developed, it was never adopted for use inside tanks. This raises an important question. Why would Germany, a nation obsessed with engineering efficiency, continue to use a slower, more sensitive weapon inside its most advanced vehicles? In this video, we break down the technical and practical reasons behind the Wehrmacht's continued use of the MG34, and why the MG42, for all its advantages, just didn't fit the role inside armored vehicles. Throughout the Second World War, the German military pushed the limits of weapons technology, often favoring precision and innovation over simplicity and mass production. But this engineering philosophy came at a price. Many of Germany's early war designs were complex, labor-intensive, and difficult to maintain under field conditions. One of the clearest examples of this is the MG34. Developed in the early 1930s and officially adopted in 1936, the MG34 was revolutionary for its time. It's widely recognized as the world's first true general-purpose machine gun. Chambered for the 7.92 by 57 mm Mauser cartridge, the MG34 lived up to the expectations set during a decade of interwar development. Weighing approximately 24 pounds, and typically operated by a crew of two to three men, it offered impressive versatility on the battlefield. When mounted on its standard bipod, it served as a light machine gun for mobile infantry units. When fitted to a tripod, it transformed into a medium machine gun capable of delivering sustained fire at ranges of up to 3,800 yards. Air-cooled and recoil-operated, the MG34 had a cyclic rate of fire of around 800 rounds per minute. This high rate of fire made it lethal, but it also meant the barrel had to be changed after every 250 rounds to avoid overheating. Despite its complex and finely machined construction, it proved highly effective across various combat roles. Between 1939 and 1945, Germany produced more than 354,000 MG-34s, a testament to its combat effectiveness. Its versatility was matched by its performance. Lightweight for its class and boasting a high rate of fire, the MG-34 offered a significant leap in battlefield firepower. But this came with a major drawback. It was meticulously machined with tight tolerances and required precision manufacturing. In the harsh, muddy, and fast-moving conditions of war, this made it vulnerable to jamming, wear, and mechanical failure, especially compared to simpler Allied designs. Most German tanks during World War II were equipped with a specialized variant of the MG-34, known as the MG-34 Panzerlauf, meaning armored barrel. This version was modified specifically for use inside armored fighting vehicles. It omitted the shoulder stock and featured a heavier barrel shroud to improve cooling and protection, making it suitable for internal mounting. The MG-34 Panzerlauf was used in three primary positions, coaxially next to the main gun inside the turret, internally in the hull as a fixed or ball-mounted machine gun, and in some cases, externally on top of the turret for anti-aircraft or close defense purposes. Its compact profile and compatibility with existing tank mounts made it a logical choice, especially during the early and mid-war years. Despite its mechanical precision and versatility, the MG-34 had significant operational limitations, 
especially in harsh combat environments. Its finely machined internal components required tight manufacturing tolerances, which made it highly susceptible to dirt, mud, dust, snow, and humidity. These were exactly the kind of harsh conditions found on the Eastern Front, where the weapon frequently jammed and required constant maintenance to stay operational. As the war progressed and conditions on the Eastern Front grew increasingly brutal, the German military sought a more robust and cost-effective alternative, one that could withstand battlefield abuse and be produced faster and cheaper. This led to the development of the MG42, a simpler, more rugged machine gun built for wartime realities. Introduced in 1942, the MG42 was a major leap forward in German machine gun design. Unlike the MG34, which relied heavily on milled steel components, the MG42 was constructed using stamped metal parts, drastically simplifying production and reducing cost. It was not only faster and cheaper to manufacture, but also more reliable in adverse conditions, easier to maintain, and more forgiving in the hands of less experienced soldiers. In terms of battlefield performance, the MG42 was a powerhouse. It nearly doubled the MG-34's effective range, extending out to 2,000 meters, and increased the rate of fire from around 800 to a blistering 1,500 rounds per minute. This extreme rate of fire gave the weapon its infamous nickname among Allied troops, Hitler's Buzzsaw, a reference to its terrifying, high-pitched sound that became instantly recognizable and deeply feared on the battlefield. With all these improvements, Better reliability, faster production, greater lethality. The question seems obvious. Why didn't German armored vehicles adopt the MG42? Why did tanks like the Panther and Tiger, technological marvels of their time, continue to rely on the older, more delicate MG34, even as infantry units transitioned to the superior MG42? Machine guns generate intense heat during sustained fire. As each bullet passes through the barrel, friction and the burning of propellant rapidly increase the barrel's temperature. At high rates of fire, such as the MG34's 900 rounds per minute, this heat builds up quickly. Overheating leads to serious performance issues. The barrel expands, shot groupings widen, and accuracy drops significantly. In extreme cases, continued stress can cause barrel failure. That's why most general-purpose machine guns, including both the MG34 and MG42, were designed with quick-change barrels. On the MG34, swapping barrels was a multi-step process. The gunner would rotate the receiver, counterclockwise from the barrel jacket, slide out the heated barrel, insert a fresh one, then lock the receiver back in place. While not the fastest system, it was compact and worked within the confines of a tank's interior. This mechanism made the MG-34 suitable for both infantry use and as a coaxial or hull-mounted weapon in armored vehicles. The MG-42 improved dramatically on this design. Its barrel change system was faster and more user-friendly. The operator simply opened a side-mounted hatch, pulled the hot barrel out to the right, inserted a new one, and closed the hatch. The entire process could be done in seconds, a major advantage for infantry crews under fire. But this side ejection design created a new problem. It wasn't compatible with tank interiors. The MG42's right side barrel change clashed with internal structures and mounting points, making it nearly impossible to service the weapon without disassembling it or exposing the gun externally something no tank crew could afford to do in combat. Inside a tank, barrel access and mounting stability are critical. The MG-34 allowed for relatively straightforward barrel swaps. The gunner could rotate the receiver in place and change the barrel from within the confines of the hull or turret. This process was manageable even in the tight, enclosed space of a tank. The MG-42, however, required the barrel to be removed laterally, to the right side of the gun, 
a method that was simply incompatible with the internal mountings in German armored vehicles. Adopting the MG42 for tank use would have required a complete redesign of the gun mounts and interior layout, something that was neither practical nor prioritized during wartime production pressures. Moreover, tanks provided a more stable and protected firing environment compared to infantry conditions. Unlike muddy trenches or snow-covered foxholes, the interior of a tank offered protection from dirt, debris, and harsh environmental conditions. This reduced the impact of the MG-34 sensitivity to environmental factors, making its tighter tolerances far less of a liability in armored use. Even in external mounts, such as anti-aircraft machine guns on turret roofs or on open-top vehicles, the MG-34 continued to be used. This was partly due to mounting compatibility and partly to streamline logistics. Maintaining one type of gun system simplified spare parts, training, and maintenance across armored units. However, toward the end of the war, MG-42s began to appear on external mounts of armored vehicles and open-top platforms, where their side-mounted barrel swap system could be used more easily without the space constraints of an enclosed turret. By the end of World War II, both the standard MG-34 and its Panzerlauf variant were still in widespread use across German armored formations. Despite the MG-42 superiority in many respects, the MG-34 remained the go-to machine gun for tanks until the war's end. After the war, the MG-42's core design lived on. West Germany developed the MG-3, a modernized general-purpose machine gun directly based on the MG-42, and integrated it into post-war armored vehicles that were specifically designed to accommodate its side-mounted barrel swap system. The influence of the MG-42 extended beyond Germany's borders and into Allied post-war designs. The M60 machine gun of the US Army, adopted in the late 1950s, drew heavily from the MG-42's operating principles. Though the M60 has since been phased out for most frontline service, it remains in limited use with special operations forces around the world, underscoring the lasting impact of German World War II-era machine gun engineering.